Whether you love or hate maths, almost everyone in the whole world has done it at some point. In fact, most people are so familiar with the field that they forget at some point, humanity lived without mathematics. What would happen if we dived into the past and found out what our beloved subject looked like in a different era? Let's begin. The earliest recorded mathematical texts were from Mesopotamia and Egypt, known as the Plimpton 322, the Rhind Mathematical Papyrus, and the Moscow Mathematical Papyrus. Coincidentally, all of these texts mention Pythagorean triples. This likely means that the first mathematical development outside of basic arithmetic was the Pythagorean theorem, though in a different, unrecognizable notation. Already, the Egyptians and Babylonians have invented their ancient numerical systems, and soon the Romans did too in the 9th century BC. Despite mentioning the Pythagorean triples, it would be another thousand years until Pythagoras was actually born. It was also around this time that the name mathematics was coined from the ancient Greek word mathema, knowledge or learning. Greek mathematics was the first real step towards the one we know today, as it introduced the concepts of rigor and proof and constituted a majority of the fundamental mathematics. One of Pythagoras' followers, Hippasus, discovered irrational numbers. Though Pythagoras believed numbers were absolute, so he couldn't accept the existence of irrational numbers and literally drowned it. While the Greek mathematicians were brilliant, the next couple mathematical breakthroughs don't come from Greece. In Egypt, around 300 BC, the great father of geometry was born, Euclid. And yes, I know, technically Egypt was conquered by Greece. Euclid was an influential figure in geometry as he introduced rules known as the five Euclidean postulates. These conditions, when put together, formed a more restricted but understandable forms of shapes and properties called Euclidean geometry. Only less than a century later in Italy, Archimedes made the first computation for pi by doubling sides until he reached a 96-sided polygon. Further away in age around 100 years later, China discovered the existence of negative numbers. Anyways, back to the Greeks. Hipparchus in around 140 BC invented a branch of geometry dealing with angles and their relationships named trigonometry. They computed trigonometry through existing knowledge and constructed the first trigonometric table. Surprisingly, however, China invented negative numbers without inventing zero. That honor goes to the Babylonians who invented it in 3 BC. Only three years before Jesus Christ was born and did his Jesus stuff. Now that Jesus Christ was born, mathematics didn't really do anything special for the next couple centuries. In the 12th century, most mathematical texts were translated into Latin, and medieval Europe took charge of mathematical advancement. From this point onwards, mathematics splits into a myriad of different fields, leaving it practically impossible to cover everything in this video. So everything from this point onwards will just be stating the key developments. An overarching mathematical equation that had been researched since 2050 BC is the quadratic equation. An equation of degree 2 had been given a solution for two-term equations practically at the start of recorded maths. Despite this, adding that extra third term has stumped mathematicians for millennia. The search for a single formula to solve the equation had been finally obtained in 1594 by Simon Stephen. This was the invention of the recognizable quadratic formula. Around the same time, the Renaissance period started and mathematical developments became ever more intertwined with science. Eventually, a kind of final boss of maths was created by Newton and Leibniz. Calculus. In Latin, the word calculus meant small pebble, which was used to denote all calculations in the sense of adding small pebbles or something like that. Now that the 18th century came about, one of the most significant mathematical inventions was made. Leonard Euler. I firmly believe that this guy is not human simply because of how much he has done in his life. He had 13 children, went blind, yet still somehow had a whole list of mathematics named after him. This guy is a god. Euler literally discovered one of the most significant constants in mathematics at the age of 20. Following these discoveries, countless less known discoveries and niche fields were developed, though I will not go into that. 
I do feel it necessary to state two specific advancements, however, known as the Gamma Function and Fourier series. I chose these two not because they are mathematically more important, though because they are some of the most interesting. The Gamma Function literally extends the factorial function to real numbers through an integral, and the Fourier series makes some crazy stuff through an infinite sum of sines and cosines. Eventually, we are led back to the present day, which, surprisingly, still has more maths. Things are still being discovered today, such as an aperiodic monotile or the pure trig proof of Pythagorean theorem. These are things that are important, but are definitely not within the scope of this video. So for the sake of our recap of history, it ends here. Okay, we are finally done. Boy, is it good to be back in the present.